but it was a sort of private thing because not all my pals would have understood and would have thought I was a bit strange. And often, because you don't get a very good view <laughs> from where I was, it was all about the music. And it was extraordinary. And it was like a sort of trip. It was like a drug. You'd come away feeling high. I really did. Hi, Jeremy. <gasps> Big Suze. My God, you're looking great. Yes. I know, and look at you. Sophie Winkleman is best known for her TV comic roles in Peep Show with Mitchell and Webb and with Harry Enfield and Paul Whitehouse in Harry and Paul. Who's Stu? Stu's my man, my hunk of monk. I said to my parents at about five that I wanted to be an actress, but I didn't want anyone to see me doing it. I loved acting, but for some reason at that point, I thought the idea of someone watching you do it was terrible. Hi, I'm her ex. Oh, Jess, don't be stupid. We were never really... We lived together for a year and a half. I, well, we kind of did, but in 2002, in that weird flat. The Love Shack. Sophie shot into the celebrity limelight when she started dating Lord Freddie Windsor, son of Prince and Princess Michael of Kent. But their first meeting was a little unconventional. We met in 2007 and we were both leaving different parties um, at exactly the same time at midnight in Dean Street. And we went for the same taxi and then realized we were both going to the same place and shared the taxi and we started playing word games on the way and then didn't want to stop playing the word games. So we carried on for a few hours that night playing the word games and then we wanted to carry on playing them and that's how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> in 2009, Sophie became Lady Frederick Windsor when she and Freddie married in a big society wedding at Hampton Court. I'd never been a sort of girl to sort of dream about my wedding day, really. I really hadn't, hadn't thought about weddings, really. I was a bit of a tomboy. Um, and it was sort of quite a, a big white affair for someone that hadn't really thought about it all. Sophie and Freddie have now moved to Los Angeles, where he works as an investment banker and she pursues her career in acting. Her latest role has been in the huge American TV hit Two and a Half Men, opposite Ashton Kutcher. Now Sophie has returned, temporarily at least, to London and to her first love. She's got just three months to prepare for a very public performance of one of the most famous arias in all of opera. The prospect of performing with a proper opera company is very frightening because as an actress, it's never frightening performing because you're someone else. And I don't know how to be Sophie. I don't. I'm, I'm very happy when I'm someone else. It's where I thrive and relax utterly. Sophie is on her way to her first mentor session at the home of English opera, the ENO. I'm very nervous about what lies ahead because it's quite exposing I've just realised doing something that you, you know, might be quite bad at. It's quite scary. It's a bit like being sort of naked and wandering around all sorts of people saying, am I OK, everyone? Is this fine? And them going, you know what? You've got to work on it. I'm talking rubbish. Sophie's mentor is one of Britain's leading sopranos, Sarah Tynan, who starred in Jonathan Miller's acclaimed ENO production of the elixir of love. I think it'll be interesting to see how strong her voice is. It'll be interesting to see how she can cope with the just the vocal, the, the demands of what she's yeah, what she's about to encounter. I'm very excited and I've been a bit stalkery and looked her up on the internet and there's all sorts of glowing things from all sorts of brilliant people. And I hope she can make me turn from a sort of squawking pigeon into Maria Callas in four minutes. I'm really hoping she can. Magic needs to occur. Very exciting to feel like I sort of belong here, even though I don't. I think how you sound, it's extremely personal. In a way, you're sort of opening up your heart and your soul to people and feel very, very vulnerable. It sort of smells grand. I think the whole thing's gonna be a challenge. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How lovely to meet you. How are Hi, you? Sarah. How are you doing? So delighted to meet you. Thank you very much for taking me on. Oh, it's, it's going to be pleasure. hard. Ready? 
I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? I need everything you can tell me. I need a lot of help. Tell me what Just to do. Just relax. Okay, she's Shake great. Can you be in my life always? <laughs> the first thing that I wanted to do with Sophie was just really to, to get her relaxed. She came and she was, she's obviously got lots and lots of energy. Just relax your head. Can I just do this on the performance? <laughs> Why don't my lips do that? Nice and big, because <laughs> you know. Everything else does. Singing involves your whole body. You need support, you need to be able to breathe, as well yeah. as just your voice, your head. That will be my top tip number one. Yeah. This wants to be nice and fizzy and relaxed. Fizzy, fizzy. As soon as you feel like going hard, <laughs> stop. As soon as you start to think about the sound being here, <laughs> everything tightens. So, in a way, it's like the worst thing that you can do. You need to think, you need to, in a way, ignore this and let it do what it does and not get in its way. Old sort of bantam trying to lay an egg. You in. sound like someone who is just getting going, and that's good. That's how you should be sounding. Oh. Yeah, see? And again. Oh. Yeah, that's not that better. Nice. Big difference. Is it? Yeah. God, nice one. Is really it? big difference. Okay. I sound quite hoarse already. I sound like a sort of old truck driver, which isn't a good start. Okay, something to work with. Something to work truck with. It's going to be a challenge. That's yeah. good, right? I think I could feel a change. Yeah, I could. I could feel a change. Sorry, I'm not being eloquent. I think I got calmer with her. She's just a very good presence to have by your side and very encouraging. The whole relaxing thing's quite important, isn't it? Really important. <laughs> okay. Singing mostly is about mind games. You need to put yourself into a really good place where you can, where you can control everything from here in a really positive way because nerves automatically will make you do this. Yeah. Everything sets. Your ribs set and your stomach sets and your throat sets and then your head sets and then... Uh, they don't want that. I didn't realise it was so sort of psychological. It's all about psychology. OK, you know this. this... Now her vocal cords are thoroughly warmed up. It's time for Sarah to hear Sophie's singing voice for the first time. she went up for that first top note, it really pinged out. I was quite surprised, actually. Because I think she was, because it's quite a, a big leap. So she really, I think she really connected in and then the sound just kind of flew out. That was, it was good, it was exciting. And I think she surprised herself. That is really good, though. You're going up for that top note and you need to think, I am absolutely going to make it to the end and it's going to be great. that she explained about the psychology of it all and how important that is. I'd never thought of that before. I just thought it was technical and clearing your head and having all the emotion from here and it's quite a lot about confidence, which I also just didn't really think about before. And at the beginning, you feel quite exposed and scared and think you sound awful. And then she was just very warm and everything started flowing more and very interesting how psychological it is. I relax the minute I'm working and being someone else, then everything's utterly fine. Oh, I was proud of myself. But being me learning to sing is... I find it scary. That's it. Sophie Winkleman has just three months to prepare for a performance of one of opera's great soprano arias. It was here, at her family's London home, that opera first seeped into her life. This house was where I grew up. I had my whole life here till I was about 24. There was an opera singer on either side. Two opera singers were my neighbours. Opera singers aren't sort of shy, retiring types. We would hear them doing everything from warming up very loudly in the garden to breaking into full song, which was... So it went from incredibly annoying, so you wanted to kill them, to completely resplendently wonderful. 
And of course, I would always hear it floating out of my father's. That was, top room was my father's, and on the balcony lived Nibbles, the rabbit. Um, so Nibbles was a big opera fan as well. That was my room there, those two windows. My father played music to me from when I was very young, and it was just part of life, it being in the house and in the car, and everywhere there'd be beautiful classical music. And it didn't feel like it was classical music in a scary way. It felt as fun as pop stuff. It just felt exciting. Sophie's been musical since I remember. She's always loved music. I never stuffed any kind of music down her throat, if you like. And she discovered by herself certain music that I love, like very old jazz, people like Fats Waller, um, Billy Holiday, and then she heard some opera, and she was just spellbound by it. The first opera I took Sophie to was The Magic Flute. The second one you showed me was Cosi Fun Tutti. Yeah. And this bit from the second act... Yeah. ..blew my head straight off and put it onto the carpet next to me. This is magnificent. This is, there's a hallowed... Yeah, it's religious. It's religious. It's not religious, but, I mean, it's... It's spiritual. ..intensely spiritual. Yeah. Every time I listened to opera, it was like the world was suddenly inexplicably exciting. I think I saw A Room with a View for the first time when I was about eight. It's the bit when Helena Bonham Carter's wandering through the streets of Florence and the piece from La Boheme starts up, O Mia Verbino Cara. And I heard it and I watched her and I saw Florence and it means, oh, my beloved father, which is a big deal as well, because I'm so in love with my father. <laughs> this house means probably 80% of me. Um, it's 20% being the new stuff.